live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon CloudNativeCon Europe 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and Ecosystem Partners. Welcome back to the FIRA here in Barcelona, Spain. This is the CUBE's coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2019. I'm Stu Miniman. My co-host for two days of coverage is Corey Quinn. And we're excited to have on the program a first time guest, but a company that we've known for quite a while, Daniel Lopez Ridrejo, who's the CEO and co-founder of Bitnami, just announced recently that Bitnami is being acquired by VMware. Daniel, thanks so much for joining us and uh, congratulations to you and the team on uh, you know, the, the exit, as it were. Uh, thank you very much, uh, gracias. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Yeah, so uh, you know, we had uh, Erica Brescia, who's the co-founder of yours on theCUBE seven years ago. Um, back then, you know, I, I was trying to figure out exactly what Bitnami was and where it fit in this whole world. Maybe you can just br bring us up to speed for those that maybe don't know, and th there's all these people in the enterprise space that might not know your community that the dev space knows real well as to you know, bring us back the, the who and the why of Bitnami. Yeah, Erika is, is my co-founder and we have been building this together over the year. It has been a quite a ride. And we started Binami as an offshoot of our uh, previous uh, a company called Bitrock in which we made software easy to install. And then we realized that a lot of what people wanted to make easy to install on Linux was uh, open source software. So we started working with companies like MySQL and Suga CRM, uh, Splunk really early on where there were only like you know four or five people. And over time, we decided to do the same thing as an open source project for all those other you know, uh, tools and, and, and projects that didn't have uh, a way to make them easy to install. We started as binami.org. We wanted to emphasize that uh, it, it was you know, an open source project, we're never going to be a company, and it didn't turn out to, to be that way. All right, so we got a lot of things to cover, but help us connect the dots as to those early, you know, .org, it wasn't a company, to a company heavy in the dev space, to was starting down the path towards the enterprise, which seemed to be a natural fit as to, uh, you know, what happened today. Yeah, so going back to your original question uh, of why, we wanted to, to make, we've always been driven, there is all this marvelous open source software out there that is super difficult to use for a great majority of people, and we just wanted to lower the barrier to make it easy to, to use, and that's what got it started. We never expected the success. It, it turns out that we went from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to hundreds of thousands of, of downloads, and you know we're super popular with developers. We have literally millions of developers using Bitnami, and you know as part of that evolution, we started working with the cloud providers. We drive a significant percentage of usage for Amazon, for Google, for, for Microsoft. That's what makes it valuable to those cloud vendors. And as the next stage of, of the company, we wanted to go directly to the enterprises in which we already have a lot of uh, developers in those en same enterprises. But when you go move to production, you know there is a lot of uh, red tape, a lot of gates that you have to go about compliance and security. And that's where we're taking the company to. Yeah. Uh, nine, 10 years ago, I stumbled over you, uh, over your company, or project at that time, and it was the second best way I ever found to run WordPress. The first, of course, is don't run WordPress. I'm very serious, don't run WordPress. And it, I'm curious now, with, your, with the acquisition of Bitten AMI, what is the longer term vision for how this fits into a more cloud native landscape? Is it continuing to just be the application, not just, but is it continuing to be the application that you get from a catalog and it's up and running? Is there a containerized story? Is there something else I'm not seeing? No, that's the, that's the core of Binami and that we will continue to do that. What has evolved over time is initially you could download an installer and run it on your Mac. Uh, and then we were one of the first, the, you know, first early adopters of AWS. So we created all the same mice and when you know, people were thinking that we're crazy, that Amazon was a company that sold books, what, you know, what were we doing? Uh, we kind of like you know, saw that where it was going early on. And then uh, as uh, Kubernetes came, came along, we were really, really early there as well. And we we're one of the early uh, partners of days around Helm. We provide a lot of the Helm charts uh, uh, right now. We even have double a little bit on, on serverless. So whatever comes next, we will be there, and our goal continues to be the same thing, which is to make awesome software available to everyone. So in, independently of the underlying platform, that's what we are focusing. So 
you know, the core mission is not changing. We're just augmenting that and going after the enterprise, more Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you know, more uh, OpenShift, more, uh, you know, multi-tier, high availability, more production features. All right, so you talk about all those pieces, you talk about Linux and, and everything there, and while, I want you to help connect, how does that tie into VMware and what you see them doing today? Because sure, Linux has been something that could live on a, you know, on the hypervisor for a long time, but in many ways there's been you know, struggles and competition uh, between VMware and them and, and, and the Linux community uh, in the past, but you know, starting to see some of that change and may maybe this helps accelerate some of that yeah, change. Yeah, I think there is a couple of companies, uh, Microsoft and VMware, that were completely different companies than five years ago, and probably you know the decision will have been different for us, like five five years ago versus you know what uh, the company is today and, and where they're going. Um, for us, VMware is you know the holy grail of acquisition is two plus two equals five, and that's hardly the you know there's a lot of acquisitions that don't go that way. Uh, for us, uh, it was a very thought out uh, decision, and and it was. You know, I think it was clear for us in the sense that we have a, a very big footprint with developers. They own enterprise IT. We wanted to go to the enterprise. They wanted to go into into uh, developers. They understand open source. They understand distributed teams. And yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I'd love to hear your insight as to that developer community because when I walk around the show floor, you know. There was that struggle between the enterprise and the developers, and now you know, you know, the storage world. You know, we need to get you know CI/CD and all these things, and they're like, uh, we don't know how to get there. And over the last few years, it seems there's been a blurring of the lines, and more enterprises embracing it. You know, open source is a big piece of that. Uh, so is it just as you said five years ago this wouldn't have happened, but you know now it, it feels like we're, we're ready for that 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 next step of the curve. Correct, and all of that is because of the standardization that Kubernetes is allowing. You can standardize best practices and you're seeing a consolidation in the CI, CD, you know, uh, wall. And it's just like things that used to be very exotic now is, you know, uh, you know, business as usual. And it's a parallel, you know, I started using Linux in 93 when there was not even the concept of a Linux distribution. You have to do all these things to just get a prompt. Uh, but over time, like people standardize, you know, I remember there were like 50 or 60 Linux distributions, you know, Slackware, uh, you know, SLS. And eventually everybody you know, converge on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I think something similar is going to happen. We just midway there in which you will not have KubeCon because you know, KubeCon will, you know, Kubernetes will be something transparent that is boring. So we're not there yet, but at some point Kubernetes will be boring and there will be layers on top of that where it will be all the action is or will be. With, from my perspective, coming from a, um, small, small, a small startup background, it seemed to me that VMware was always one of those stodgy, boring companies I didn't have much time for. And lately there have been a series of high profile acquisitions. Heptio, Wavefront, CloudFront, and now Bitten AMI. And it's, it's really changing, almost without me noticing, my entire perception of their place in the modern evolving cloud ecosystem. I, I think so, and that's one of the things that attracted us, and I, I told to Tori Bodhi, you get to spend a bit of time with, with the CEO, with you know, the people at, at the high level. For us, it was very important, and again, we, one thing that we haven't mentioned, if we have been, for the most part, we have been bootstrapped, you know, we have been profitable, we only took a little money from Y Combinator when we were already profitable, so we have choices. Uh, sometimes our BC funded peers don't have that choice, so it was a very meditated decision. And for me, for this kind of acquisitions with a much bigger company, you know, uh, joins forces with a smaller company, the, the strategies need to be aligned. And, and to me, VMware realized that the wall is, you know, a few years ago, that the wall is going to be multi-cloud, the wall is going to go th towards Kubernetes and containers, and the acquisition of Heptio, the acquisition of Cloud Health, uh, told us that they're serious about that, and that we can, you know, fit right in and, and take advantage of that transformation that, that, that are going and so far is, is working really, really, really well and, and that's part of what you know, this made us decide to go in this direction. Yeah, Daniel, what can you tell us about what things, once this actually does close, what will that mean for the brand? Uh, you know, what about relationships with, you mentioned Heptio, but not only Heptio, Pivotal uh, you know, obviously is a big player in this space. You know, how does all of that line so up? So with, with Heptio and, and you know, other uh, units like the marketplace, other groups, we are you know, we're already working with them before the, the acquisition with Heptio, with Ksonet, and a, a bunch of other uh, initiatives. 
and we're just gonna double down uh, on that. And, and they wanna keep Binami, they wanna keep the brand, they wanna keep the team. Uh, if anything, we're gonna get more resources. And again, that was uh, the fact that they, you know, they don't wanna touch something that is working, they just, you know, we have been partners for, I think, seven or eight years, and we have gotten to know each other over that time and build that trust that is needed. And, you know, it's, it's in a way, nothing is gonna change. Is we're gonna, the same team, doing the same things, we're just gonna have more access to, to their, you know, user base, which is what we're gonna do. Like, we started down this path because we were, you know, raising money to build an enterprise sales force, and at some point we decided, okay, this, it doesn't make sense. We're gonna go, you know, give away all this chunk of the of the company uh, to get access to the enterprise or to build a, a sales force to get access to the enterprise when you know we can be part of VMware and and you know <laughs> get that for free so you've mentioned a fair bit about what's going to change as far as you getting uh, exposure to new customers effectively broadening into additional markets what is this mean for your existing customers who are, in some cases, whenever you're in a customer of a small-ish small company and there's an acquisition, it sometimes is natural to be a little concerned of, do I need to find a new vendor? Do I need to find a new provider? And frankly, there's nothing else like you that I've ever seen on the market. <laughs> no, it's, it, that's a really good question. Um, for us, what is a little bit unique is we have uh, millions of users, but we only have a handful of customers. So our customers are AWS, Google, Microsoft, Oracle. Um, so it was very important. VMware is already um, a vendor to all of this, yes. and and so far, you know, everybody's going to stay, and we're going to continue on deep in the relationship. Um, and and it, that's one one of the things that made this attractive. So for our customers, it's not nothing is 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 going to change, and we're just going to continue to deeper uh, deepen those relationships. And that's again, that was important. Have we gone through some of the other options? There will be a lot of very awkward conversations to, to have, and that's not the case. Yeah, Daniel, how about the developer community itself? As you said, millions of downloads out there. We understand how you yeah, know, some of the like, reaction you know, can it's, be. It's, 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 it's being where going to be, the evil company is going to touch that. And I think um, so far the, the feedback has been uh, extremely positive, including even Hacker News, right? Like, which is. And those people don't shocking. like anything. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, you know, I've been. You know, high hacker news since the very beginning, and you know it can be harsh. So it was something that was monitoring how people, and so far has been very, very positive. And that's only not a testament how much people um, like Binami, but also again, like being were acquired Heptio, and everything's great. Like we told to a lot of the people at Heptio, you know, hey, how are things going? How has it been, right? And everybody loved it there. So, you know, for us, it was uh, it was a very something that gave us a lot of reassurance that all these other you know, open source, uh, companies with a lot of uh, open source DNA uh, were being successful there and gave us you know, reassurance. Time will tell, we'll, we'll see one year from now where mm -hmm. we are, but you know, so far everybody that we have talked to, you know, all the conversation has been yeah. great. So Daniel, t you have a, a very interesting viewpoint on this whole ecosystem. We work with all the cloud providers. Any commentary you'd give of kind of, you talk that kind of midway point of the maturity, uh, you know, where do you see things today? Where do you see them going? You know, what do we need to, you know, fix as an industry? Where it's very difficult to predict where, where things are, are going. Um, I just think that at this point, it's very safe to say that it's going to be a multi-cloud wall. That was now like, you know, three, four years ago, you know, it seemed that, you know, it could be like a repeat of the 90s in which Microsoft owned 90 something percent of the, of the market share and there's a lot of things that didn't make sense. Uh, you know, right now at least, uh, you know, Amazon plus a bunch of other clouds are very viable and if anything, they are growing. So a lot of companies like HashiCorp, like VMware, uh, companies that support this multi-cloud environment, not all of them, but all of them are very well positioned to thrive because you know, it's not going to change anytime you know, soon. The other thing that I think is safely to, to assume is we're going to have more artifacts than ever. So companies like you know, uh, so, um, uh, Artifactory, will, I think they will, do, they will do well as any companies have to do with security. We're going to have more security issues, not less, but you know, that's in the, in the long term, so that's as much as I can predict. All right, well, Daniel, thank you so much. Congratulations again. We look forward to seeing you at VMworld, uh, you know, where we'll have the Cube. There'll actually be our 10th year uh, do, doing, doing the Cube, Cube at VMworld. Awesome. So uh, uh, we're excited and uh, always happy to, you know, t talk, talk to us, especially the startups, uh, ha having some, some, some great news here. For, for Corey Quinn, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks as always for watching the Cube.